Welcome to Garden Sanity. I'm Laura. I'll be your host today <laughs> as I take you on a backyard garden tour of what's blooming in September here in Zone 7, Southern New Jersey. We've got blue sky. Temperatures are a heck of a lot cooler than they were during the summer. So let's get started. Despite all the heat waves and the extreme heat we had, look at how pretty the flowers are. In fact, most of them are still the pale lime green color, which I always call a pistachio color. <laughs> Reminds me of pistachio ice cream for some reason. But look how pretty these are. Now getting just a hint of pink on them now. So I can't quite figure out if we're gonna have a longer season of enjoying these flowers into the fall, I guess. Now down here, you can see some of the cuts I had made and I'll put a link up above when I did a quick emergency kind of little pruning off of just the flower heads when they were drooping in the heat of the summer. And you can't really see the cuts that well. I mean, obviously there are some missing flowers here at the bottom where I did most of the cutting off, but you've got some newer ones that grew larger and took their place. And you even have, see that guy back there? Oh, and this guy got a little bit of scorch. And this guy did too. And that's not directly from the sun. It's just the sun was a contributing factor though. Definitely with the extreme temperatures we had. Now here's another one, you know, I'm fascinated by this. Ever since I heard about the pufferfish hydrangea that's coming out, whereas the hydrangea flowers get a little bit older, the flower heads, it gets a little extra sprig on top. I keep seeing it. I showed you in the last video, my September garden tour of the front yards, and I'll link to that above. I had that in two places on the little lime hydrangeas, and this is a limelight tree, limelight hydrangea tree, full name. And look at that, there's another little sprig. <laughs> It's something I never noticed before, and now I'm seeing it again. Interesting. Okay, now I'm seeing sprigs on a lot of these. <laughs> hmm. Do I have a pufferfish limelight hydrangea tree combo? Invented before anybody knew what it was? I guess you don't invent trees, right? You breed trees. And there's some brown there. But honestly, I this time of year, I usually have more pink and it's on its way to change colors. So I'm actually pleasantly surprised. Really didn't think I'd have this good of a season with this tree when we started to get into the heat and then I had to cut off a lot of the bottom flowers. But it looks really pretty right now. I look out the kitchen window and I'm like, man, I love this tree. I'm holding the camera up so high right now because I'm so short, just so you can see what the top looks like. I wish I could get you even closer. It's just really cool looking. All these pale flowers, pale lime flowers, loving it. And you can see there's a gap here too, by the way. And in a way, I'm happy that's there because I can show you the inner stems. You see how much stronger they're getting, how much thicker they're getting over time. You can see in, well, maybe you can't see in, but yeah, I'm kind of short there. But there are, this is where I did a lot of the pruning. And I love that these stems, as they're growing, they're growing straight up. So these are really becoming strong stems as I back up there so you can see better. So now we just got to beef up some of these lower ones, but that's kind of hard because they're usually newer stems that grow out from the tree. So we'll see how we do as we prune next spring for next season. So now let's look underneath at some of the plants I planted recently and see how they're doing. 
Ta-da! <laughs> Look at this guy. This is the Beyond Pinked Bluebeard. I just planted him about a month ago. This sat in a pot all summer until I could finally figure out where I was gonna plant it and then when it wouldn't be as crazy heat wise. In fact, I had to show you in that video when I planted it, a lot of pictures that Proven Winners granted me permission to use because I didn't have my own shots or pictures, photos, videos of how the plant would look. Well, here you go. It is so cool looking. Look at these flowers. They open from the bottom. So what you see on the top parts are still buds. And they almost look kind of fuzzy, don't they? Oh my God, how cool is this? And this is small so far, right? This is gonna get to be about two to three feet tall and wide. Look at this. Oh, am I happy to see this. Like I said, I love pink in the fall garden. Now, yeah, it's only September, but this should bloom for a while. Oh, that's just beautiful. So I am really pleased with this plant. Oh my goodness. To start blooming so, so quickly. And I wasn't good to it, but I promise you, Beyond Pink Bluebeard, I will be so good to you from now on. That's nice. Now, in front of it, I planted these uh, GM, what were they, GM Tempo Rose. Got distracted because what do I see? I see the lovely Japanese anemone leaves popping up nearby. Gonna have to dig those out, and a weed. Nice. <laughs> but the color on the leaves are so pretty, aren't they? I mean, these aren't gonna bloom until next spring late spring into summer, but they're very pretty. So they don't look like much now, but I know they're there. And next spring, I'm gonna look forward to watching them grow. And as you can tell by the top of this boxwood I had chopped off a year ago, we've got some leaves falling. Already it's starting. The lavender chiffon rosa Sharon is doing well, but this morning it only has a few blooms on it. However, it's filled with new buds about to open all over the tree. So this is still gonna put on another show. It doesn't bloom as floriferously as the Helene rosa Sharon that I have, but does put out a lot of nice flowers. Very pretty. Now I want to show you the little quick fire hydrangeas. And I have four of them in this bed. And they got really beat up this year with the heat waves, extreme heat. And yeah, they got water. And yeah, they put out some new growth. You see these taller leaves, which is great. And 99% of the leaves look healthy, which is also great. But look at the flowers. They're brown. They're brown already. I mean, this is earlier than last year. Now, I do still have one or two of the pale pink, which is nice. And I do still have these guys. So I'm not knocking the little quick fires. It's just that it is what it is. They just got beat up this year. And don't know if that'll happen next year or not. I'm not sure. This is a pretty one. Now this one gets a little bit more shade from the limelight hydrangea tree. And so it does still have some more pink on it. But it also definitely has a lot of the brown. And there's the Beyond Pinked Bluebeard in the background, just to give you some perspective. So I'll leave all these flowers on, not only for the fall season, but the winter season as well. And they give some winter interest. Some of them might fall off if we get heavy snowstorms or anything like that, but they're surprisingly hardy and resilient in terms of how strong the stems are, even though they are looking very thin right now. 
So most of these will stay on in some form. They'll bleach out a little bit more in the winter, but I think they're still so pretty. So to me, this is almost a four season shrub. And I just love the veining that's on these flowers. Let me see if I can get closer for you. Let's try down here. Here you can see it a little bit. There's like some little veining on each petal. So pretty. It's a little more pronounced when they're dried, I guess. But boy, that is just pretty. The dappled willow continues to look really good except for the one on the end. That's still dying. We also cut back the Magnolia Jane a little bit from the bottom. Let me show you close up what that looks like. So yeah, here's the dead and dying dappled willow shrub and we aren't gonna look at him right now, sorry. <laughs> We're gonna go to the, next to it, our Magnolia Jane tree. So this is a pretty big tree. You can see it goes way up and there was a lot of growth during the summer from new stems coming out of the bottom. And we cut some of those away. You can see a newer stem there in the back that grew, I think it started last summer. And no, that's not a big snail on the fence. That's actually a leaf that kind of stuck there. <laughs> so anyway, uh, what we did was we cut back some of the lower growth. And in part, it was to give more sun to the three false yuccas here, also called a red yucca. This one in the back had been in the shade for way too many years, and it wasn't really producing flowers, although it did this year, which was great. And then what I did do was I left, let me go up here so you can see, I left these guys sticking out because, because you can see right here, got a little catkin right there. So that is gonna be a flower next spring. Pardon the background, my neighbors just turned on the sprinklers on their yard, so. <laughs> but you can see some of the catkins already starting. There's some right there. And they all look like little pussy willows, really cute. So the base is more open now. And so that's gonna give these guys a lot more sun. And besides the weeding that I need to do to come in here and get all that cleaned up. I did want to show you <laughs> the remnants of the big tall stalks. You see this stalk starts down there and it keeps going and it keeps going. And you got a couple seed pods that formed on it. And let me step back so you can see just how big this guy is. And this is the end of the drip hose line that we ran all summer. And this is the other Magnolia Jane we planted, and we're not sure what it's supposed to be. It looks more like a shrub. It definitely filled out this year, but it's nothing like the original Magnolia Jane shrubs that we purchased years ago that were three trees, two died. We put this one in its place. We were desperate for one last year, so we ordered it. Again, I said this about another plant recently that, you know, when you order in desperation from nurseries that you're not familiar with, <laughs> sure what you're gonna get all the time. Now, I'm not knocking you, Magnolia Jane. You have beautiful leaves, very healthy. You obviously are happy in your spot. But I don't see you growing anytime soon to the height of the fence, which is six feet tall. Whereas the ones we originally purchased, which is what this guy is, those were already about four or five feet when we purchased them. So this guy's got a ways to go. But he did have some blooms last year, so that's good. You see the bee in there? He's there at the bottom. You see him? Ah, he's there tucking in. This is the Helene Rosa Sharon. And I mean, look at this plant. It is covered with flowers. How beautiful is this, right? And the flowers happen throughout the stems too. So it's not just on the ends, which is really nice. 
These two right here are actually in the plant. I'll move back so you can see. Now this time of year, especially after the summer we had, to me it seems like aphid season, aphid season, sorry. <laughs> I grew up saying aphids. I don't know why, my parents don't say it. I don't know where I got that from. But anyway, you can see, uh, it's not surprising to see aphids on your Rosa Sharon shrubs or your roses. So I've been spraying this every so often. I'll come out usually in the evening when the bees seem to be gone and other pollinators. And I will spray the entire plant with Bonide 3 in 1. And that seems to help. I mean, I definitely still see some aspects of it, but what I'm not seeing are as many ants crawling on it. And if you see ants crawling on your shrubs, your flowering shrubs, look for aphids. Because ants love what aphids produce. And a quick aside, this is the color guard yucca that the rabbits demolished two seasons ago. And this past winter, I covered it with a chicken wire cloche so they couldn't get at it. Although we didn't really see any rabbits back here, but you don't always see them. But it looks beautiful now. Look at that. I mean, that is, wow. That is some beautiful growth. Wow. We don't do anything to this. It's nice. These flowers are beautiful. And they've been going nonstop all summer, even during the heat waves when they started looking a little wonky. They weren't as ruffly, but they still produce flowers. And this also still has lots of buds on it. This is gonna go for a while. And it looks so pretty with the limelight hydrangea tree behind it, doesn't it? There you can see the difference of the pale lime green versus pure white of these flowers. Here's a bud about to open, so you can see what that looks like. It's a little more pink. And then they open pure white. So what happens is the flowers die on the plant and then they fall off and they either fall on your beautiful pavers, but they won't stain them, or they fall under here and look kind of yucky, <laughs> but it is what it is. I try to pick them up, but you know, it's kind of a losing battle after a while. I love the ruffles. So pretty. If you want to see what my front yard gardens look like right now, you can watch this video next. I'll have another garden tour soon, and until then, happy gardening.